Hello, and welcome back to Teacher Gimbal channel. If you're new here, please make sure to like and subscribe and the button that's right about over there. If it's not there, then it's somewhere on this side. Anyways, today we'll be going over illustrative math mathematics, but if you're a teacher or anybody else involved in a school, make sure to head over to rateyourprinciples.org and check out our new platform where you as a teacher can rate your school year 23-24 principal. We're going to be uploading the rest of your principles for school year 24-25 soon. All right, let's get started. Today we're going to be going over Illustrative Mathematics, Geometry, Unit 2, Lesson 2, Congruent Parts, Part 2. Let's go. Problem number one. Line SD is a line of symmetry for figures AXP, DZ, HMS. So Noah says that X is congruent to because the sides AX and HM are corresponding. And I just mumbled the letters because we're going to be going over them more carefully. Why is Noah congruent statement incorrect? So the Pentagon, we have A, X, P, D, Z, H, M, S. That's the whole shape that we're looking at right here. That's not a Pentagon. That has one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides. That's an octagon. And then Noah says A, X, P, D. So we went this way, this way, D. S, P, D, S, so that's the whole thing, and we assume the last one, is congruent to H, N, Z, D, S. Now I'm going to do a different color. H went to M, uh, H, M, Z. What? But we don't go to Z. The correct order would be to go down this way and that way, because we have to trace the figure when we're labeling it like this. He says I H uh, A X and H M are corresponding. So the first two letters are corresponding. So they are corresponding and they are congruent. But you can't write this out like H M Z because you go across. It would have to be H M S D Z. So with what Noah said, A X P D S, that's good. He went A X P. They kind of went down and then up. So this would have to be M. HZ, that same down and up, is congruent to MHZ, and they keep following DS, DS. So when you have shapes, the way you write them out are the figures, each vertex, so the A, which is here, has to correspond to the corresponding vertex. So the A corresponds to the M, the X corresponds to the H, the P corresponds to the Z. The D corresponds to the D because they're in the same spot. And the C should correspond to the S. C? This is an S. I'm sorry. Sometimes I get my C's and S's mixed up. Especially when I'm talking and writing at the same sides. Time. So they should all correspond, which is why Noah was incorrect. And that's our correct congruent statement. All right. Pause the video if you want to look that over because we're going on to problem number two. Problem two. Figure... See, there's a mistake here. M, B, J, K, G, H is a figure of image of, is the image of figure, that guy, after being rotated 90 degrees, counterclockwise around point K. So M, J, K, G, H is M, no, M, B, so M, B, J, K, G, H is a figure of A, F, E, K, J, B, after rotated 90 degrees, counterclockwise around point K. So here's my clock counterclockwise is backwards, so we went that way. Okay. Draw a segment in the figure AFEKJB to create a quadrilateral. Draw the image of the segment when rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise around point K. So AFKJB is AFEKJB. Listen to my marker, not what I say. So we want to draw an image of the segment when rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise around point K. So I'm going to draw this guy right here, and now we have the quadrilateral. We're going to rotate him 90 degrees counterclockwise around point K, and oh, you know where he's going to line up? He's going to line up right down here. Right? Because... Does that make sense? Oh no, he's going to line up right here. So how did I do that? 
um, this guy right here, so I'm going to go that over again because I went pretty quickly. This is the shape I'm looking at. Now when I'm rotating 90 degrees, I always like to say, okay, I pretend I have a little segment between the point I'm rotating around to the corner, and this guy rotated to there, which means he's dragging this whole figure kind of gets pulled with him around point K. And so E's going to go here, and then the rest of the figure is going to match up. And look, he ends up actually in the same corresponding position in our figure MBJKGH. And we're done. Pause if you need to go over this, put questions in the comments, and we're moving on to the next question. Problem number three. I can get all the answers in this one, good. Triangle HEF, so HEF, I'm sorry, this is smaller, is the image of triangle FGH, FGH, so this other triangle, after 180 degree rotation around point K. So he just flipped and went all the way around. Select all the statements that must be true. Triangle FGH is congruent to triangle FEH. This guy and that guy. Yeah, he's a rotation. Same triangle, flipped around. It means they're congruent. Triangle EFH is congruent to triangle GFH. And now I see this is a corresponding figure question. So we're going to double check here. FGH is congruent to triangle FEH. Not necessarily. Because... And this is going to require some visual thinking on our part. He rotated 180 degrees, which means H went on top of F and F went on top of H. In this case, it's saying H corresponds with H, which is not right. So what we're going to need here, and look at this, we're going to make this easy. HGF is congruent. HGF rotated is going to be congruent to F E. H. Okay, and we're going to need our little triangle figures. I mean, H has to match with F, G has to match with E, and F has to match with H. And we're going to remember that, and it's going to help us. Triangle EFH is congruent to triangle GFH. Well, does E match with G in this case? E and G match. Yep. F matches with F. F should match with H. H, so nope. Angle KHE is congruent to KFG. So KHE, so that's KHE, that's this right here. Okay. Is he congruent to KFG? KFG? Well, KHE, KFG. This corresponds to this, and that corresponds to that. This is a corresponding figure, so this one is correct. Because if you rotate him around, EG is going to match up here. This middle segment is going to match up here, and this diagonal is going to match up here. So that actually is true. Is angle GHK congruent to angle KHE? So these guys have some Ks in there. So GHK. Is this guy congruent to KHE? KHE. Not necessarily, because we know these two points don't correspond. This guy corresponds to this guy up there. Segment EH is congruent to segment FG. EH, is he congruent to FG? So let's do some deleting here. EH, is he congruent to FG? Well, remember, he this guy flipped around, so that guy's there, and this guy's here. Yep, that is correct. And you might have to visualize your rotation here. I would recommend getting out a piece of tracing paper if this is hard for you to, hard for you to visualize. Segment EH is congruent to segment FG. So we have EH and we have FG right here. Let's see. EH. Does that match up to FG? Well, EH which should match up to GF, so actually no. And you can use the corresponding parts here. It, oh, it says congruent, not corresponding. So GF is right here. He corresponds to EH. 
but because they correspond to the same segments, actually this is correct. That's a segment thing. It's not a um, angle triangle is congruent, so that works. And then segment GH is congruent to EF. So GH is that EF? Yep. GH matches EF, so they are also congruent because they are corresponding, and corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. Pause this video, get your tracing paper if you need to, go ahead and kind of try to reason this through. Again, questions and comments, I will do my best to answer them if you put them in the comment section. This is particularly hard to visualize, so if you need a little few, minute, few minutes, definitely take time right now. Problem number four. When triangle ABCD is reflected across line AB, so we have A, B, C, oh, A, B, C, not A, B, C, D. So we have A, B, C was reflected across line A, B. The image is triangle A, B, D. So this triangle that I'm not going to highlight. Why are segments A, D and segments A, C congruent? A, D and A, C. Why are they congruent? Well, it's a reflection. Congruent parts of congruent figures are corresponding. That's the same thing. Congruent parts of congruent figures are corresponding? No. Corresponding parts of congruent figures are congruent. Yeah. AC, AD and AC are corresponding parts, parts of congruent figures. We know they're congruent because it's a reflection, so therefore they're congruent. An isosceles triangle has a pair of congruent sides. Yes, that's true. Yes, this is an isosceles triangle, but that doesn't... We know it is because it's a reflection because the corresponding parts are congruent. That doesn't give us the why. Segment AB is a perpendicular bisector of DC. That tells us nothing about the sides we want to look at. All right, that one was easy. Let's go on to the next one. Problem number five. Elena needs to prove triangle BED and BCA are congruent. Okay. Angles. Provide a reason to support each of her statements. Line M is parallel to line N, or line L. I can't talk today. So this guy and this guy, she says they're parallel. Well, I see they got a pair of corresponding angles that are congruent, marked by those little angles. Therefore, the lines are parallel. Line angles BED, BED, so this guy, and BCA are congruent. Well, I see a transversal right here. Oop, let me use a different color. Through parallel lines, so yep, I'm going to draw a little dash through them to make them different. They are congruent. And we're done. That's it. Let's keep going. Transversals can do a lot, so make sure to memorize your transversal facts. Problem number six. We have triangle... Can't include them all. Oh well. Triangle FGH is the image of isosceles triangle F. E H so F G H F B H is the image of F E H after reflection. So this guy reflects over line H F, and he lines up, which immediately tells me this is congruent to that, that's congruent to this. So all four sides are congruent, which is a rhombus. Select all the statements that are a result of corresponding parts of congruent triangles being con congruent. E F G H is a rectangle. No. It's not a rectangle necessarily because our angles aren't 90 degrees. EFGH is a rhombus. Well, because this is congruent to this, this is congruent to that, and all these sides are congruent, yep, it's a rhombus. Diagonal FH bisects angles EFG and EG, EHG. So we have this diagonal right here. Does he bisect EFG? EFG. So this guy. Well, I know this angle has to be the same as this angle right here because it's a reflection and they're congruent. And when you have two congruent angles, that means that line down the middle is a bisector because bisect means to split in half. And on this side, this angle has to be congruent to this side because again, it was reflected. And so therefore, this line in the middle is by definition a bisector. So yep, he is a bisector. And now we have diagonal FH is perpendicular to side FE. No, we know nothing about that. And I'm pretty sure there's only one answer. And even though it is a rhombus, and we know it's a rhombus because the corresponding sides are congruent, I don't think necessarily that follows exactly from the result of corresponding sides are congruent. So I'm going to say C is the best answer. Sometimes what's true, actually often, true doesn't mean best. 
Oh, wait, maybe it is an answer. I thought it was a four question answer. Uh oh. All right, a four answer question, not a multi select. So we know it's a rhombus. We're going to go that B is the correct answer. We know that it bisects. And now E and F. Angle EHF is congruent to angle FGH. So EHF, EHF, this guy right here, is he congruent to angle FGH? F Absolutely not. And his angle F E H F E H. So this guy right here now congruent to angle F G H. Oh, they do correspond. So yes, he is true. All right, let's go on to the next question. Problem number seven in our last question. This design began from the construction of a regular hexagon. Draw one segment so the diagram has another hexagon that is congruent to hexagon this guy. Explain why all the hexagons are congruent. So a regular hexagon means it has six sides. One, two, three, four, five, six. And all the sides are the same length. So, or all the sides are congruent. We have one segment, so the diagram has another hexagon that's congruent to A, B, C. A, B, C, I, H, G. Okay, oh, if I draw a segment right here, then this guy is going to be congruent to that hexagon, and this guy is also going to be congruent. Now we have to explain why. Well, in that last question we talked that when we drew that line, that the rotation landed right on top. So if we draw a line right here, or if we took this figure and we rotated him, I would say uh, 120 degrees counterclockwise, this would line up right on top and would result in a congruent figure. If you have any questions, please make sure to put them in the comments below. As always, thanks for choosing Teacher Gimbal. Like and subscribe in a button that's somewhere over here. And if you're a teacher or anybody else, make sure to check out rateyourprincipal.org. I'll see you in the next one.